Well, you know, I, I'm certainly not one to make bold predictions. Um, but I'll say this, I, I'm as excited as I've been uh, the three years, and, and that's based on, on what we have coming back, the young men that we have coming back. We obviously lost two really good seniors in Zay Jackson and Jamichael Hawkins, but uh, for the first time in the three years, we have a majority of our team. What I'm also excited about is the uh, amount of experience that a lot of our players, all of the returning players that we have, have starting experience and, and a lot of game experience. And I think at, at where we are, uh, there's no substitute for having that game experience. We haven't had that luxury the first two years that we've been here. Um, so that's exciting. We were able to win nine of our last 12 last year, won our last seven at home. And really, I, I, you could see the confidence in the team growing throughout the year. So uh, I almost hated to see the season end. And it's, you know, I thought we gave a good show in there in the conference tournament. We qualified, obviously won a round, first round game. Felt like we really should have won that second round game. Um, certainly had our opportunities. Uh, but, but anyway, with that being said, uh, I think the door's also open in the league this year. You know, uh, Stephen F. Austin has obviously had control of the league. Coach Underwood is the new basketball coach at Oklahoma State now. Uh, there's going to be a change over there. So I think it's really, it's really wide open. And uh, we hope, certainly hope to be competing for the league championship this year. Coach, you only get two hours with your players during the offseason, during the summer months. As a coach, that has to drive you crazy because you need more time. You need more time. Talk a little bit about the off-season workout program and what you've seen. I mean, I'm sure it's limited with your two hours a week, but your strength coach reports back to you how things are going. Sure. Uh, to just kind of clarify on what you're saying. We, we get eight hours total a week. Six of them, though, are in strength and conditioning. We can have two hours uh, in skill development with basketball or with our team. Now, one of the good things, they did have a rule change this year where we used to have to go in four-man groups. and. That would literally take all afternoon to get your team through that. And then in the NCAA, in its wisdom, allow, it has disallowed that rule. So it allows you to work your whole team. That's a great benefit for us. Um, we're certainly further along, and a lot of it goes back to experience, the number of players that we do have returning, than at any point that we've had in, 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 as we approach our third year. So over the first two years, I, fe I felt like that we've had, made a good step from our first year to our second year. Now it's time to take that next step. We finished strong. Now the challenge that we have is can we continue that momentum uh, through our tough preseason schedule into league play. But we're certainly excited about it. Recruiting-wise, what can we expect from any newcomers? Any well, we, we felt like that we really addressed some needs. One of, the, one of my criteria for recruiting players is, is, is their ability, one of many, but uh, is their ability to score the ball, the ability to shoot the basketball. Uh, we recruited four really good players that all have the ability to stretch the floor. Uh, and shoot the basketball. I think uh, uh, one young man that's going to be uh, uh, probably in a position because of his experience to make a greater impact is a young man named Devon Hayes. Devon Hayes is coming to us via Southern Miss. Uh, uh, he actually played for me in high school, uh, so we had a great connection there. They, they had a coaching change at Southern Miss a couple of years ago, and that opened the door for him to come to us. Um, we're excited, 6'7 wing, not, generally not the type of player we see in the Southland Conference. Uh, most of the Southland Conference teams will play three guards on the perimeter. We've certainly had, had to do that. But a big 6'7 wing that can really shoot the basketball, extremely athletic. He's, uh, he's going to bring something to the table that, that we haven't uh, had here in the last few years. Also, uh, our three guards, three freshman guards that we've signed, uh, Chris Mejia and Brandon Gonzalez from the Miami, Florida area, uh, due to our connections down there with Coach David Kiefer, uh, and a young man named Michael Corciani, whose name may ring a bell with some folks. Uh, his uncle, uh, Chris Corciani, was an All-American at NC State back in the 80s, one of their all-time greats. And his father, Gabe, was one of the all-time greats at UNO. In fact, his name's on the floor down there. So we felt r real good. And he's, he's as tough and gritty young man as is that we've had. It. Uh, he, I think he really represents what we stand for uh, in our basketball program. So we're certainly excited about the recruits that we have coming in to supplement what we have returning. Coach, uh, right now the South, uh, everybody in the South pretty much is thinking about football. Uh, it's that time of year, it's football time. It's not y'all's time of year yet, but it will be soon. But sometime, first of October, mid-October, people are going to start thinking about basketball and they're going to start looking at the schedule. What can you tell us about your schedule? Well, uh, you know, we're always going to play one of the tougher schedules in the country. We like that. We, we, it, this year's no different. One of the great exciting things that we do have, uh, uh, besides a, uh, California will be in the top five by the time we go 
uh, to Berkeley to play uh, if they don't already begin in it. They're going to have a great team. Um, we, we, we do our usual, but one of the ex, uh, usual tour of some outstanding teams, but we, we have Tulane on the schedule this year. It's our second game of the season. Uh, I, it'll be a great opportunity for people to come watch us. Another thing that we have that's, uh, we play more Division I home games outside of our league. So obviously in the league, we're going to play nine home, get home basketball games as part of our conference schedule. But we were able to either due to home and home returns or or some uh, creative scheduling, we were able to get some other D Division ones to be able to come to Hammond. So uh, Maryland Eastern Shores coming in, Florida A and M's coming in, Jackson State's coming in. Jackson State won the SWAC; they were NCAA uh, participant last year. We go to Southern Baton Rouge, another NCAA. Excuse me, Jackson State Southern was the NCAA tournament team. Jackson State went to the NIT. Uh, but anyway, excited about our schedule. Again, rugged as always, but we think it helps prepare us for league play. Real quick, because Larry's getting ready to start the program. You do have to replace some guy, one guy off your staff this year. He got the opportunity to move across the hall. He took the, the, head, the head women's job. Uh, I know that you're supportive of when your staff moves up because it only looks good in the program. But talk a little bit about him and, and his departure and, and what you had to fill. Well, certainly uh, big shoes to, to fill for us. and. You know, Coach Goff and I's relationship goes back many, many, many years, uh, back to, to high school. In fact, we worked together for even one year on the high school level. Uh, I've known him, have great respect for him, just like everybody else does. And he came, came in as the, this was all developing. He said, Coach, just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. And what do you, he said, and also pick your brain, what do you think? I said, well, when it comes to coaching girls, I said, Errol, you're on your own. I said, I have no idea. He's already doing a great job. Uh, I think it was a, 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 a great hire uh, by Coach Ortiz in our administration, and I think you'll begin to see immediate, uh, a, a, an immediate payoff on that hire, I really do. So, it, it, but it hurt us in the terms of uh, you know, what he brought to our program and what he really means. And uh, You don't really truly know how well respected he is until you get into the community. And as now that I've begun to be in the community uh, for the last couple of years and begun being a, a, a resident of Hammond, America, you really understand that in the day-to-day -day movement. So I'm really proud for him. He's going to do a great job. He's, I've already observed that they're doing a great job, and it's just a matter of time before he turns that around.